So a new image AI model has been floating around from Google and it's called Nano Banana. And I'll be honest with you, there are a lot of different AI image generators out there. Some of them can be really slow, the results can be hit or miss, and honestly, sometimes it can be a bit of a pain to work with. But this one is very different, an image generator and an editor wrapped up into one pretty incredible package. And it's shockingly fast, I mean almost instantaneous. In fact. That might be a good place to start. Let's put it to the test with ChatGPT's image generator. I'm going to run a prompt and we'll see how much quicker Nano Banana can create an image from the same prompt compared to ChatGPT. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and use this image, drop it into ChatGPT or Gemini, drop the same one into ChatGPT. For the prompt, let's just keep it something simple. Place me on a stage giving a talk. Same thing for Gemini. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll run the ChatGPT prompt first and then right after run it on Gemini. All right, Gemini is done. And if we have a look at them, there we go. I'm on stage giving a talk. Let's see how ChatGPT is doing. Still generating. According to this, it's just under halfway. Still going, still going. Just in case you haven't noticed, I have been cutting forward just so that you're not sitting with me watching this video, waiting for this image to generate. But Nano Banana created the image in roughly around 25 seconds and ChatGPT is about, it's running on three minutes. It actually just finished and that looks nothing like me. We'll get into character consistency in a later point of this video, but that's the image that uh, ChatGPT gave. There's really no stage. It kept the exact same pose. My face has changed that. I don't know who that is. And if we look at what Nano Banana created, also kept the same pose, but at least I'm on a stage. There's an audience. There's a screen behind me. It actually looks like I'm doing a talk. So as far as the speed test goes, as you can see, it's no contest. And that speed difference is what makes a major difference in your experience when you're using these AI generators. This is a tool that you can actually use in your day-to-day -day workflow, and it gives you the chance to really focus on the stuff that you actually love doing. It's kind of like a creative partner that gives you your time back. So you as a solopreneur, you have your business, maybe it's a coaching business or it's in consulting or an online e-commerce store, really any type of business actually. Every day you wear all of these different hats. You, the CEO, you have the marketing director, you're the social media manager who's in charge of all of the social posts, all of your ad campaigns. You are in charge of it all. And just managing all of that content can feel like a full-time job all on its own. But what if it didn't have to be like that? What if, like I said, you've got a creative partner that's gonna get all of that done for you, literally in a fraction of the time? And apart from it being crazy fast, let's take a look at six different, truly practical ways that you can use Nano Banana inside your business and help you with your day-to-day. -day. Now, this is just a short list of quick fire ideas to really get your creative juices flowing so that you can see exactly the type of stuff that you can do with this new model. And the first idea that I had was you can use this to create personalized, memorable gifts for your clients. Now, as a business owner, it's a no-brainer that you need your clients. And one of your major goals is to grow and nurture relationships with those clients. That's what it's all about because as a relationship grows, that's how you get people to move from being just a client to being super fans of your business. So imagine you a professional photographer and you've just finished a shoot, whether it is for a family photo shoot or a wedding. In this example, we're gonna go with a family photo shoot. Let's grab that one and just drop it in. Now, I'll be honest, I was playing around with this for a good few hours before recording this video. So when I'm uploading these images, it does take a while but like i said it only happened after probably three hours of playing around on this ai but in the meantime i'm just going to drop the prompt and the prompt is simple put the family on the cover of parents magazine with the headline family of the year there we go hit enter run the prompt and in literally a few seconds it's done so that is the original image that is the new generated image let's have a look at how it put everything together all right, Parents Magazine, Expert Advice for Modern Families, Family of the Year. Some of the words are misspelled, they not even words at all, but you could change that. You could literally remove those words at the bottom or you could change it and tweak it according to how you want to. So if you give it a try and I just say something simple like remove the yellow text at the bottom, perfect, problem solved. So baby sleep secrets, toddler tantrums, meals in minutes. You can really see it looks like an actual magazine cover, which is pretty cool, and it's removed that whatever that was at the bottom of it. And yes, this is a tiny gesture, but this emotional touch that you're adding that is so personalized is what's gonna get your clients talking about your business to their friends and family. So it's more powerful than you might think. And you can do that in less than a minute. Now this next one is for anyone working with physical spaces. So for example, landscaping, interior design, architects, 
You guys probably know how much of a pain it is to actually visualize ideas to your clients. But of this, you can literally just take a photo of your client's backyard, drop the prompt into Nano Banana. So for this prompt, I said, add a fire pit and some modern deck furniture. While we wait for that to run, this is the before picture. So you can see it's quite an empty yard. It's got a few fairy lights at the top, but we want to spruce it up a little. All right, and the image is done. Now, this is a very simple prompt. The more details you add to it, the more stuff it's going to be able to add or the more changes it's going to be able to make to the image. But it did add the, uh, the furniture on the outside. Did it change up the table? Let's have a look. It didn't change the table but it did include the fire pit and it removed that chair that was here on the side. And yes, this might not be a perfect image, but like I said, if you add in more details into your prompt, so for example, it can neaten up the grass, add in flowers over at the back. This is just to show you how quickly this AI works and how quickly you can actually visualize your ideas. So when you use it like this, you're not just describing a concept to your clients, you're actually showing them a finished or almost finalized visualization of how the AI is going to look. And doing something like this traditionally would normally take a couple of days. I don't know if you are in that industry. I'd love for you to confirm it. Just let us know how long rendering, you know, like a visual image generally takes when you're working with your clients. But the fact of the matter is that in that time, your customers aren't just sitting around. They're probably shopping around at your competition. So having something like this really helps you get to the yes from your customer a lot faster. Now, this next one is honestly one of my favorites. It's where you can use it to create hyper-targeted ad campaigns. Think about it. When you run ads, you need different visuals that appeal to different audiences. And a lot of times we don't have whether it's the resources or the time to do a bunch of different photo shoots in a bunch of different locations just to test your campaign. So let's say you've got a business or a company that produces or creates and sells water bottles. You can just take a picture of your one of your products, upload it, and then put the prompt with whatever you want it to be, wherever you want this picture to be taken. So in this example, we've got place the water bottle on a trail in a forest. Let's run it. What's really funny right now is that it's taking longer to actually upload the images than it is to generate them, but we're done. And that is the final image. Again, you can edit it, make the water bottle bigger, zoom in if you want to focus on any more detail on your product, but it's literally as fast as that. And you can see it looks really natural. It's got a shadow at the bottom as well. It looks like it's on a trail. So something like this could possibly apply to an audience who enjoys hiking or generally just being outdoors. If we were to change the location, we could say something like, change it to a beach. Man, honestly, this looks really good already. What you can also do is double down. So let's say you sell your product in different locations or different countries or cities around the world, right? So if we take, for example, let's say we selling the water bottle and you are selling it in or marketing it to an audience that is in the Gold Coast in Australia. I just found a image real quick of the Gold Coast. That's how the original image looks, by the way. And the prompt for this one is going to be place the water bottle naturally into this image. So firstly, it's performing really well, even though the prompts are extremely basic. And secondly, so far, it's literally done everything that we've asked of it. Have I mentioned how you actually do this? So Nano Banana can be accessed in different ways. You can access it through Google's AI Studio, through Gemini, like I'm doing right now. But when you open up a new chat, all you're going to do is click at the bottom. It'll say tools, select create images, and you can go ahead with your prompt and adding your pictures. But now we've got the image uploaded. Okay, that does look a little strange. The water bottle looks kind of off, but it did include the, the shadow. So what you could do over here is have a hand holding onto the water bottle extending out towards the beach. In fact, let's actually try that. So let's see if we can make a quick change in how well it does it. So I just said have a hand holding the water bottle out towards the water. Almost, but that's the picture it came. But now the arm or the hand is coming out from the side. Maybe I should have specified coming out from the center or from the bottom. But still, the bottle is pretty consistent. The hand's placement is a little weird, but in terms of it looking realistic and fitting in, like the lighting and everything around it to match the environment, that all looks good. So you can literally take your product and then place it into accurate locations around the world if you are selling your product in these different countries or these different cities. And because the images that you're using are of accurate locations that even if you just found online, that personal kind of touch is what gets people's attention. It gets them to click and then eventually probably buy your product. Right now for number four, I'm actually really excited because this is something that I genuinely have a problem with almost all of the time when it comes to creating images using AI. And it is character consistency, getting the AI to create myself, to look like myself, and also then put me in different situations without changing my face, without changing my complexion, my features. I mean, you saw what happened with the chat GPT test we did earlier. That looked nothing like me, maybe like 20%, but definitely not me. But as a solopreneur, your face most of the time is your brand, right? But 
you probably don't have the time to be running around doing a new photo shoot every single month. So that's where you can use this AI to create different photorealistic or hyperrealistic images of yourself in different situations or different scenarios. Because like I said, doing all those photo shoots, just not sustainable. All right, so we've got the image uploaded. The prompt is, show me as a Formula One driver who has just won the Abu Dhabi race. By the way, this is the first time that I'm actually testing this. So I'm really excited to see how it turns out. We're all going to be seeing it for the first time together. All right, there it is. Okay, so it didn't really get my face. It kind of just takes similarities. That's what I've noticed, at least in my experience. But we've got the F1 logo at the back. We've got winner. I'm up on the podium. Got my champagne holding the cup. If you look in the background, it's kind of blurred out but I'm pretty sure it says Abu Dhabi GP. It may just be a matter of me upscaling my images and uploading them at a higher resolution so that the AI can, you know, work with it a little better. But like I said, this is something that I have an issue with all the time. It takes me quite a while to actually get that character consistency. So a recommendation that would probably help you with this is to just go onto Google, find a free image upscaler, upscale it to about 2K or 4K, and then use those images inside the AI that you're going to be using to recreate your face. Okay, and for the fifth one, we're going to be looking at visualizing abstract ideas or different concepts. So let's say you a vintage fashion reseller or a vintage fashion designer, right? and you've got a garment or a dress that you've created or that you're selling, upload the image and I'm just gonna tell it, put this dress on a model in a modern day trendy coffee shop. Make sure that we are creating the image. And this looks really, really good. Modern day coffee shop, you can clearly see, you know, like the uh, stuff that they're using, the coffee machines. There's the dress. It looks like it actually fits within the picture, but if you really wanna take that extra step. So all I did was add it to the prompt, I said, apart from the 1950s, I said with an old camera. So that little change in the prompt, you can see that it, the photo's kind of tarnished on the corners. It's got the little scratches on it. Kind of like if it was an older photo that was printed out, it's got these kind of scuff marks, scratches and damages on it. This actually looks really genuine and it combines the two eras, right? So a modern day coffee shop, a 1950s dress that looks like it is something that was taken in the 1950s and you can get something like this done without having to hire out a set or make arrangements to actually take the photo in a coffee shop or hire a model literally if the images were taking this long to upload this could have all gotten done in i'd say 90 seconds so when you do stuff like this you're not just showcasing your products on a blank backdrop it's almost like you're telling a visual story and inviting people into a different world into your world and it's that kind of creative and unique content that actually gets people to stop scrolling and start paying attention to what you're actually putting out there and this last one number six is we're going to use the ai to create instant realistic mock-ups of your products so let's say you've created a new logo for your business or for your company you want to see how it looks like or kind of figure out a vision on how you want your business cards to look so you could tell the ai grab my logo and put it on a business card on this texture on the top of a wooden table. And it's gonna do that for you. In this case, we're gonna use the Taja logo. So we're gonna use two different images. We've got the Taja logo over there, and then we've got a plain white hoodie over here. And what we're gonna do is simply just say, place this logo onto the white hoodie. So if you're creating, you know, personalized or custom merchandise for your brand, then this is how you can actually test how it's going to look on the different garments. So it looks pretty plain. It looks like it's literally just put the logo on there, but that's probably because there's not much for the AI to work with. So let's take it one step further. I'm just going to copy this image, paste it over there. And once it uploads, the prompt that I'm going to use is combine the two images so that the person in image one is wearing the hoodie in image two on an airport runway with a plane in the background. All right, I've actually used an image of myself because I've really want to get this character consistency down. Let's have a look at the image. I kept all my clothing. My sneakers are exactly the same. My pose is exactly the same. It literally just switched out the hoodie for my t-shirt in the original picture. This over here is the original picture. So everything else stayed the same. I am on an airport runway. I am wearing the hoodie. The hoodie actually looks really good. You know, the way it folds and creases, the way I'm wearing it, it fits well into my pocket because my hands are in my pocket in the original image. But it really gives me an idea on how it will look if we were to create a hoodie with the Taja logo on it. So using Nano Banana in this way really helps you sell your ideas faster. You can literally show your clients exactly how a finished product is gonna look in an instant and professional way. I really think that this new model is gonna change the game in how businesses do their marketing and how they create their visuals because it basically allows you to literally do more with less. You don't have to be spending all of that time creating the graphics or worry about having a shortage of resources. Those types of things are no longer an issue. And also if you do need a little help with the prompts, I will link in the description a guide 
directly from Google that gives you different prompt templates that help you achieve different changes to images that you want to make. Anyway, what do you think? Which of these ideas would you be most likely to use in your business? I'm actually genuinely curious. So let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching. And if you want more videos about how you can use AI to help you grow your business, save time, save money, then remember to hit the subscribe button to this channel. Keep creating, keep growing, and I'll catch you in the next video.